Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, it is the awesome chat. I am Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. We're back in the studio for this one, guys, uh, because we got a long distance call coming in to talk about drones. And I'm really excited to get into that. Uh, of course, this is the awesome chat. You can check out everything at awesomecast.net. Rate and subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page. Uh, and please uh, join the show, uh, the main show, uh, the awesome cast, of course, the general conversation weekly about tech and gadgets from the Pittsburgh State of Mind over at live.awesomecast.net every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Let's get right into it. I got a friend coming at us from Somerset, PA. I believe he's at today. Joe Lloyd with CME Engineering. How are you doing today, Joe? Hey, real good, Mike. Thanks for having me. So about a year ago, uh, we got together out there at, at, at CME Engineering uh, to do a little video talking about a new uh, really interesting uh i guess we can call it a toy out there uh um around what you guys are doing in your work can you talk a little bit about what that drone is and and, and why did you why why do you guys have it right yeah so um we, about a year ago we uh well actually uh actually it leads in a little bit longer than that we we started pursuing the uav technology um to assist in our engineering platform um and we we discovered that <laughs> we were right on the cutting edge. There were a lot of people trying to get into this space. Um, so we, we ended up checking out a lot of different drone types. Uh, and we settled on one in particular, which best suited what we do currently here at CME, which is the like a fixed wing drone. Now, it, most people, whenever you, you know, they, they think, okay, he's got a drone, it's a copter. Uh, but you know, for what we do at CME, uh, we have a lot of uh, big sites, mining sites, industrial sites, so we're looking to cover a lot of a lot of area re- relatively quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, and since since putting this uh, th- this piece of technology into our repertoire, uh, we've been able to pr- keep it pretty consistent throughout the year uh, in terms of being um, in use and billable situations. Uh, and it it's actually uh, been pr- you know been a pretty successful venture. That's awesome. Give a little bit of what this drone di- does. Like, so it's a, it's a fixed wing. Uh, it's got a bit, a bit of technology packed into it. Uh, amazingly, since it's like, you know, I, we, I picked this thing up when we were doing our shoots and it's, it's, it feels like, like the wings are the biggest thing and it feels so freaking light, but there's a lot going on in there. Can you talk a little bit about right. what exactly it does when it goes up in the air for you guys? Yeah, it's uh, the whole package uh, with battery and camera in it is about two pounds. Um, it it basically is uh, EPO foam. It I'm uh, really light uh, for the size of it, and um, the, the the drone uh, has some existing survey grade technology that um, it, it lends well for what we do because we have a lot of the the GPS units and the in the RTK units. We're, They've, uh, this company uh, has been able to integrate a, an RTK unit, which is uh, a way of uh, staying connected with the GPS and improve the precision of it. And that helps make very accurate maps that we can use on a, on a uh, engineering platform, which uh, that you can't really do with a hobbyist drone. Or, or you could do it, but it takes you uh, a little bit longer to process the, you know, the final product. Mm-hmm. And we talked a little bit about the technology, like like the product that you guys are getting. You guys had a really interesting discovery when you were you were doing some of the first kind of survey maps, and, and this is basically you know taking pictures, taking that telemetry data, and making a very active, detailed map that that you guys can use in your designs in in, in a lot of the, the the functions that your company does. But but there was there's one where you really kind of uh, uh, were surprised at the the detail that come up. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right. Yeah. The, the, basically what the drone does, it takes a series of, uh, of photos on, on a planned grid over the, um, over the target area or the target mapping area. And, um, it takes the photos, uh, and the, at, more precisely the position that the photo is taken. So it's, 
it's the the um, the attitude, to it, uh, so to speak, that the plane sitting in the air is it you know pitch yaw roll and um, and also the the location and it's correcting the location from autonomous uh, GPS, but um, that's d- done mostly in post processing. But once it gets these photos up and, and it stitches them all together into an ortho mosaic and uh, the, then it creates a digital surface model using uh, photogrammetry, uh, just standard overlap uh, stereoscopic relief, and the, you, you produce a three-dimensional model from that. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, the, 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 the actual um, the, the size of these uh, data, data sets, when we get them back, are somewhere in a range of like 3 million to – We've had some that are nine million uh, pixels, and it depends a lot on the you know, the height of the, the plane in the air and the and the size of the um, you know the, the ground resolution. But you're really getting a shot about on average every 1.3 inches mm-hmm. on the surface. So I mean it's it's covering a lot of lot of detailed terrain. And, and the detail is so high that I, I think you guys were surprised you saw a little bump in a field one time. Yeah. Yeah. We saw, uh, we had a, a flight up and, uh, we were doing a, an as build of a, a, of a, uh, expanded commercial facility. And there was a, lo and behold, we saw the deer get up and, uh, we came back and did the, uh, processing and, and there it was in, in three dimensional form and, uh, in the point cloud. It was pretty cool. It was really cool. <laughs> so uh, you guys, you guys have been using this for, for a lot of different uh, use cases, uh, including, I think, you know, when we were talking, you were discovering ones where people were asking what you could apply it to. And it's been about a year with this. Is, are, is there anything you, new that you can talk about that, that maybe you guys weren't expecting that turned into kind of a, a, a new venture or a new, new applying this to maybe even old venture that you guys do in the many things that CME does there? Um, one new venture that, um, we, we hadn't really dove into when we first got it was uh, solar panel uh, I guess examinations or analysis of the, the cells you when you fly over uh, large banks of solar uh, panels you can um, you can get a, either an IR or a, a multi-spec camera to um, basically determine whether you have dead cells or not and it kind of uh, it's kind of like a routine maintenance for someone that would own such a facility uh, of course it, it Western PA doesn't lend well for solar uh, by and large. There are some pretty big uh, solar banks around, but um, that that was one thing that we you know we found kind of as a surprise. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I say a lot of the a lot of the survey uh, things you guys were talking about. Uh, and so I mean this this really you know we we talked a lot before uh, when we were working on the project about like the cost versus like manpower to do these kinds of things, right? Right. Uh, right. Like, like it's, it, go ahead. It's huge. It's, um, it's actually opened up a lot of the, um, uh, new avenues, new projects that we probably wouldn't have done, um, before we had this tool. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, like if we're, if we're on a, uh, um, just say a, a mine site and our client wants, uh, wants to know what their reclamation, uh, liability is or, or a volume that they push per month from one month to the next. We would probably have spent a, a week and say is the scenario where you have a, a, a month-to-month comparison of what that individual has pushed, we would have had to had a guy there you know, for, for two weeks, one, one at the beginning of the month, one at the end. And, and while that time, they would have to be either stand still or, or we're you know, dancing around dozers, so to speak, <laughs> where now we can, uh, we can throw the plane up in the air literally do the flight in 15 minutes, um, have our data set, process it maybe the next day and have them a number, you know, within a day. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just, it, it has, uh, created that work, which we economically and, and practically the, the client just wouldn't have done before. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad to hear that's working out, uh, pretty well for you guys over there. So you, you've been at this for, what? of course, we were talking about last last year, and the there's been some movement, probably not enough, 
about drone regulations. And that was one thing I, I brought up. I'm like, so what do you guys have to worry about with the FAA, FAA and things like that? Because uh, uh, I know there was some control things when we were, it's like some control regulations when uh, when uh, we discussed it before, uh, about a year ago. Um, are there concerns with the regulations coming up and what you do with this kind of device? You got to be keeping a pretty close eye on it these days. We are. We're keeping a pretty good pulse on it. Um, the FAA just released their final ruling um, just a few months ago, and it it came out, I, I believe, favorably for the, the commercial use of drones. And it also put in place uh, some safeguards for yeah, kind of a recreational hobbyist. Um, the one big thing that they've implemented is they want everybody to register their drones. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, whether it's, you know, you buy one at the kiosk at the mall and um, or you're, you know, you, in our case, we were buying it from a, a like a commercial vendor. Um, either way, you go through the same registration process. You get an N number, which is like an N number on a plane. And that's your registration should that that drone, you know, be crashed into something, cause damage, um, whatever the case. Uh, all are pretty unlikely for the size of drones that that we deploy because they're you know two and a half pounds uh, could cause some some damage to a person if you know, hit them. But by and large, it's probably a low probability. Mm -hmm. um, but that that registration has been probably the uh, one of their big fronts. And then also there's a, uh, a the, with the new regulations they or the rulemaking they they had out. Um, they created a new section of the Code of Federal Right Regulation that uh, allows uh, for different um, uses of this, and it, it's pretty well defined. Uh, no big surprises, other than the fact that, uh, which is favorable to the commercial industry as well, was the uh, um, the, the I guess the the pilot certification, so to speak. They now created a drone drone certification, a drone pilot certification, which uh, before you would have had to go through and do a an actual flight training in a plane, and um, which is pretty expensive. You're probably talking in a range of ten thousand dollars or so. Um, to where now you know you have to you have to know the the, the regs, uh, so you have to know the code of federal reg that uh, these things operate in and know how. Other planes operate within that airspace so that you can avoid them and, and uh, you know, just, just have a general well-being. And, and then you pass a, an aeronautical uh, knowledge test. Mm -hmm. So that's a big help to the industry. You know, that, that gets more people into this space pretty quickly. That's good. That's good. But again, you know, kind of kind of interesting. Again, like I, I want to buy the $50 Radio Shack drone and now I need to comply with the FAA. It, it's really kind of a... Interesting thing, because like, you couldn't just buy a cheap plane and get something up there, right? But uh, right. glad to work right. on that point. So uh, we talked about like how this kind of form factor a little bit at the beginning, but I wanted to kind of I, I thought it was really interesting, um, just kind of like visually when we were going over this. Uh, so it is a wind drone, right? And yep. the takeoff is kind of interesting. Like it is. It's it is. Like, you, you shake the drone three times and. Uh, and it, the engine starts up, so it picks up on that inertia that of the drone going. Um, and once it comes up, you know, we, you check your your wings on this drone just to make sure that the, the servos are working and everything's functioning okay. And uh, it has some automatic uh, programming in it. If, if a a wing isn't in the whole way, it can sense uh, be some sensors in the body, and uh, it will it won't even start up. Mm -hmm. but uh yeah then you you basically push it out away from you and the thing just takes off but it's really light it, and it's it's been pretty good we've had a couple that have you know you've had some tall grass and they've clipped the grass and come down but uh by and large it's it's been pretty good very good and basically it just kind of uh comes into a soft landing as but as well as it can a little bit i know there was a couple of things and scrapes from those landings it looked like right. when we were looking at it before yeah, it, it just comes in and uh, skids on the bottom. It has a little uh, like plastic plate on the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, does a skid landing, and the propeller sometimes comes off, but uh, it's just held on with rubber bands. So you know, it's 
it's designed to. It's amazing how much it, like how much how 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 great technology this is. And it's still like part of the construction reminds me of those little wooden uh planes that that we'd always get at the campground that were held together right. by like little wood a little bit of glue and rubber bands, <laughs> and, you, and you throw them out. Uh, but uh, that's fantastic. Uh, but again, you know, something something nice and, and and durable. And I imagine I imagine those those wings would be easier to replace if damaged than than the important stuff is protected, right? <laughs> right. Absolutely. So yeah. awesome. So so again, you, you've had you've had access to this for for well over a year now. Uh, you've had all these business applications to it. So I'm going to ask you a tough question. Or maybe I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully you you can answer this question. Um, what are some non? <laughs> have you had any ideas of? Oh, we could do that with this drone. That that maybe are outside the scope of the business. If you had one for yourself. Um, a, a, like personal recreational use. You're yeah, saying? yeah. I you know I haven't. I've been pretty well consumed in the in the business and trying to make um, you know trying to trying to create advantages for our clients to expand, you know, with this technology. Um, I, I don't know of any personal uses that, but I mean, there, there are many, it, basically any, any scenario where, you know, you, there's a safety concern, um, whether it's inspecting, looking, uh, just getting a different vantage point. That's, I mean, that is largely where, where these things excel. I know on a lot of our, our mine sites and industrial facilities, we would have a man uh, out on the edge of a high wall, so to speak, where if that high wall, which was blasted to create, wasn't competent um, and that, that strata fell, they could you know, be injured or killed. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, if you take that, that aspect to like from just, just getting different vantage points, um, you know, creating recreational videos and, and things, it, it's really limitless. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, so if people want to check out what you guys are doing uh, with this drone and, and, and it may, maybe, you know, what you're going to be growing with it, uh, uh, with this technology, where can people find out more information about what CMA is doing? Uh, on our website, um, cmemanagement.com. Um, you know, obviously it can contact me. Um, in Somerset here, 814-443-3344, um, or, or via email at joe.lloyd at cmemgmt.com. There you go. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, thank you, Greg, out there uh, at CME for hooking this up, too. Great working with all you guys on this project uh, late last year. Uh, please go check it out. It's still a video that I, 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 I show around. I'm really happy with how it And it's drones, man. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Anytime yeah. I get a chance to be around them, it's great. I'm afraid to get my hands on them. I, I'm just going to crash them. Uh, I know right. this one's. I know this one's fairly foolproof, but still. <laughs> right. No. Understood. Thank Thanks you, for having me, Michael. Thank you so much, Joe Lloyd, CME Management, or I'm, I'm sorry, CME Engineering. Excuse me. Um, and uh, I think it's one of your other wings, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> you guys do a lot of stuff uh, all yeah. over the Western PA area, of course. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining me. Check them out. Check out the drone. Check out the rest of the talks over at AwesomeCast.net. We have over a year of great conversations we've had with people in and around Pittsburgh and technology and new businesses and startups and 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 hell, there's some video game people in there too. Uh, check out AwesomeCast.net and just look for the Awesome Chat interviews thank you so much to joe you have been my awesome guest you have been our awesome audience have an awesome week this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast network find out more at sorgatronmedia.com